if there's something very important to be developed from the moon, I'm not sure what it is right now. And I sure think we should identify what it is for America to make such gross expenditures again for human habitation on the moon. After 55 years of silence, Buzz Aldrin has finally broken his silence about what really happened during Apollo 11. At 94 years old, the last surviving member of humanity's most daring mission is revealing untold truths about the terrifying moments that almost left him and Neil Armstrong stranded on the moon. This isn't just another space history video. This is the shocking truth behind the scenes of mankind's greatest achievement told by the man who lived it. Here's what really happened. When everything started going wrong, when Buzz Aldrin looks back at July 20th, 1969, he doesn't just remember the glory of the moon landing. At 94, he's revealing the hidden moment that nearly turned humanity's triumph into its greatest tragedy. The untold story begins not with the famous first steps, but with the eagle's descent, a descent that was spiraling toward disaster from the very beginning. Roughly nine minutes before touchdown, Armstrong realized they were going to overshoot their landing site by approximately three three miles. What Aldrin and Armstrong didn't know until those final moments was that a simple physics oversight had already doomed their carefully planned approach. During separation from the command module Columbia, residual pressure inside the connecting tunnel wasn't sufficiently vented, causing Eagle to get an additional boost. This wasn't a minor miscalculation. They were heading straight for terrain they'd never studied, never simulated, never prepared for. The lunar module pilot watched through his window as unfamiliar craters and car-sized boulders appeared below. These weren't in any of the dozens of photographs they'd memorized. This wasn't the smooth sea of tranquility they'd trained for. And then, the alarm started screaming. The 1202 alarm, a program alarm that indicated the onboard computer was being overloaded with data. Then another alarm, and another. In the cramped confines of the lunar module, with Armstrong fighting the controls and Aldrin calling out coordinates, mission control had to make a split-second decision. Abort the landing, or trust that the intermittent alarms wouldn't cause a complete computer failure. Fortunately, as the alarm was intermittent, Mission Control deemed the risk of computer overload low and greenlit the landing, Aldrin later revealed. But that wasn't the worst of it. The fuel gauge was dropping faster than calculated. They were nearly running on empty, and they still hadn't found a safe place to land. Flight controller Steve Bales would later recall the concept of the dead man's curve, an altitude where there simply isn't enough time to abort before crashing. Armstrong was now flying the Eagle manually, skimming horizontally across the moon's surface at 400 feet, desperately searching for smooth ground. Aldrin watched the fuel indicator with growing dread. 30 seconds. That's all they had left. 30 seconds of fuel between making history and becoming a cautionary tale. But as terrifying as the descent was, what awaited them on the lunar surface would prove even more harrowing. The astronaut experience that followed would test every ounce of their training and ultimately require Require a solution that no one at NASA had ever anticipated. The broken switch that could have meant death. The world was celebrating. Neil Armstrong's voice had crackled across a quarter of a million miles. Houston, tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. 650 million people watched on television as Armstrong and Aldrin took humanity's first steps on another world. But what Buzz Aldrin is finally revealing now, 55 years later, is that their greatest challenge wasn't the landing, it was getting off the moon alive. After nearly three hours of collecting rock samples and conducting experiments, Armstrong and Aldrin climbed back into the cramped lunar module. Aldrin spotted something on the floor that made him gulp hard, a broken off circuit breaker switch lying in the dust. In the confined space, with their bulky life support backpacks, one of them had accidentally knocked it off the instrument panel. Aldrin's heart sank as he examined it more closely. This wasn't just any switch, it was the engine arm circuit breaker, the one vital component needed to ignite the ascent engine that would lift them off the moon. Without this switch, they were stranded. There would be no rescue mission. Michael Collins, orbiting overhead in Columbia, couldn't come down to get them. The shocking truth that Aldrin kept buried for decades was how close they came to a fate too terrible to imagine. The broken switch had snapped off from the circuit breaker needed to send electrical power to the ascent engine. No power meant no ignition. No ignition meant no way home. The behind-the-scenes reality was that they were sitting on the moon with a billion-dollar spacecraft rendered useless by a tiny piece of broken plastic. 
Euston was informed, but as Aldrin and Armstrong tried fitfully to sleep that night on the lunar surface, Mission Control was scrambling for a solution. By the next morning, Euston had not figured out a solution. The clock was ticking, they had a narrow launch window, miss it, and the orbital mechanics would make rendezvous with Collins impossible. The lunar mission was on the brink of becoming a tomb. Then, Aldrin had an idea. In his shoulder pocket, he carried a simple felt-tip pen he'd brought along to mark readings on the rendezvous chart. What he realized in that moment of desperation would save both their lives and the entire Apollo program. The space history books would later gloss over this dramatic reveal, but Aldrin remembers it vividly. I used a felt-tip pen and pushed it in, and Houston says, Hooray, we got a live circuit. The pen's plastic tip fit perfectly into the hole left by the broken switch. When Aldrin pushed it in, the circuit closed, power flowed to the ascent engine, and two astronauts were given their lives back. This untold story reveals something crucial about Apollo 11. It wasn't just advanced technology and careful planning that got them home. It was improvisation, quick thinking, and a felt-tip pen that cost less than a dollar. But what really happened during Apollo 11 goes even deeper than near disasters. The mission was plagued with conspiracy theories that would follow Aldrin for the next five decades. And now, at 94, he's finally addressing them head-on. The conspiracy theories that won't die. For 55 years, Buzz Aldrin has had to defend the greatest achievement of his life against an army of skeptics who claim it never happened. The astronaut experience of walking on the moon should have been the pinnacle of human accomplishment, celebrated without question. Instead, Aldrin has spent decades battling conspiracy theories that call him a liar and suggest the entire Apollo 11 mission was filmed on a Hollywood soundstage. One of the most persistent theories centers on the shadows in the Apollo 11 photographs. Critics point to images where shadows appear non-parallel, claiming this proves multiple light sources, like studio lights, were used. But Aldrin's response cuts through the confusion with scientific clarity. The effect is simply due to perspective. Parallel lines appear non-parallel when reduced to a two-dimensional plane. It's the same optical illusion you can observe on Earth any day when the sun is low in the sky. Artists have used this principle for centuries, yet conspiracy theorists treat it as the shocking truth of a government cover-up. Then, there's the famous waving flag that skeptics claim proves there was wind on the moon, impossible in a vacuum. Aldrin's explanation is elegantly simple. A telescopic pole was extended along the top of the flag to make it fly proudly, and the wrinkles from being compressed during the four-day journey created the appearance of movement. The mission secrets weren't about fakery, they were about engineering solutions to display the American flag in an airless environment. Perhaps the most scientifically illiterate conspiracy theory involves the Van Allen radiation belts. Critics claim these zones of high-energy particles surrounding Earth would have killed the astronauts, thus proving the lunar mission never left Earth orbit. Aldrin's answer draws on both physics and common sense. The transit time through the Van Allen belt was incredibly short, and traveling through it fast enough posed no problem whatsoever. It's like firewalking, the key is not to linger. The astronauts passed through so quickly that radiation exposure was minimal. The hidden moment that Aldrin finds most frustrating is when conspiracy theorists point to the missing stars in lunar photographs. If they were really on the moon, they ask, why is the sky black without stars? The behind-the-scenes answer is embarrassingly simple. The lunar surface and the astronauts were brightly lit by the sun, requiring fast shutter speeds and small apertures that couldn't capture faint stars. It's basic photography, not evidence of a hoax. What Buzz Aldrin is revealing now, at 94, is that these conspiracy theories aren't just annoying, they're insulting to the 400,000 people who worked to make Apollo 11 possible. The untold story isn't about government deception, it's about human achievement in the face of impossible odds. But beyond defending his legacy, Aldrin is looking forward. He's sharing a vision for humanity's future in space that makes Apollo 11 look like just the beginning. The man behind the visor. The iconic photographs from Apollo 11 show an astronaut in a gleaming spacesuit, the lunar module reflected in his gold visor, and humanity's flag planted in alien soil. What those images don't show is the man inside that suit, a man who would spend the next decades grappling with depression, alcoholism, and the crushing weight of having achieved the impossible at age 39. This is the hidden moment Buzz Aldrin rarely discussed before, but at 94, he's finally opening up about what really happened after Apollo 11 changed his life forever. 
Standing on the moon, Aldrin described what he saw with two words that would define his autobiography, magnificent desolation. It was breathtakingly beautiful and utterly lifeless, a paradox that captured the human condition. But at that moment, Aldrin wasn't thinking about philosophy or the hundreds of millions watching. While others thought about what we were doing, we were very concentrated on being on the moon, he later reflected. The astronaut experience meant missing the collective awe everyone else witnessed. Looking back now, Aldrin strongest feeling is gratitude. Gratitude for the 400,000 people who contributed to Apollo 11's success. The mission's secrets weren't held by a few. They were shared by an entire nation working toward a common goal. Yet returning to Earth brought challenges no one had prepared them for. Aldrin struggled to find purpose after accomplishing something no future success could match. He battled depression and turned to alcohol, struggling in the shadow of his own greatest achievement until seeking help in the late 1970s. But this chapter has a redemption arc. At 94 years old, Buzz Aldrin made a statement that caught many by surprise. I have never been happier in my life than I am now. This is from a man who walked on the moon, survived depression and addiction, and spent decades as one of the most famous people on Earth. What really happened to bring Aldrin to this place of contentment? The answer lies in his partnership with Dr. Anka Faur, whom he married on his 93rd birthday in January 2023. Aldrin described her as having brains, heart, and courage, the complete package from the Wizard of Oz. She is the love of my life, and we do everything together, from eating meals, to planning projects, to watching the world go by. Aldrin shared, This wasn't his first marriage, but it was the one that brought him peace after Apollo 11. They connected at a work event in December 2017, and after years of dating, she finally agreed to marry him. Sadly, Dr. Anka Faur Aldrin passed away in October 2025, but during the time when Aldrin reflected on these 55 years since Apollo 11, he was at his happiest. What Buzz Aldrin is finally revealing at 94 is that Apollo 11 wasn't meant to be the pinnacle, it was meant to be the beginning, the mission to Mars. If you think walking on the moon was Buzz Aldrin's biggest ambition, you haven't been paying attention. For three decades, he's been developing a plan to establish permanent human settlements on Mars, and he wants it accomplished by 2039, the 70th anniversary of Apollo 11. This isn't science fiction. This is Aldrin transforming from historic astronaut into futurist architect. Aldrin's vision centers on the Aldrin Mars Cycler, a spacecraft that would perpetually orbit between Earth and Mars like a subway in the sky. The system would use the planet's gravitational forces to sustain the orbit, expending very little fuel. Instead of building new rockets for each mission, we'd establish permanent infrastructure, making Mars travel routine and affordable. The mission secrets behind this plan lie in Aldrin's orbital mechanics expertise, the same expertise that earned him his doctorate from MIT and the nicknamed Dr. Rendezvous. He's calculated trajectories, making the journey in only three months, rather than the usual 150 to 300 days. But unlike previous Mars proposals, envisioning round-trip expeditions, Aldrin's plan is radically different. Send astronauts to Mars and keep them there. My concern was, if we went there and came back, a typical mission, we will have demonstrated the ability to go to Mars to the Congress, period. They'll then say, let's cancel the program and spend the money elsewhere. Aldrin explains, he learned from Apollo's mistake. We proved we could reach the moon, then stopped going. The dramatic reveal in his Mars plan is that it's not about flags and footprints. It's about building critical mass to establish genuine Martian colonies. What really happened during Apollo 11, Aldrin argues, was proving we could leave our home planet and survive on another world. The untold story is that we were supposed to keep going. Now, at 94, Buzz Aldrin is making his final push to ensure humanity doesn't waste another 50 years. His message is urgent. Mars isn't a distant dream. It's achievable if we commit. The space history of tomorrow depends on whether we're bold enough to follow his pathway. If you could ask Buzz Aldrin one question about his time on the moon, what would it be? Be. Drop it in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Catch you at the next video.